If we can't look after our first people, you know, in this country, then really, you know, what are we doing? You know, and if a, if a society is um, measured by the wellness and the healthiness of the children, again, you know, what are we doing? I'm a part of the, the Close the Gap campaign and support it because I believe in equality. I believe uh, essentially in that great Australian saying, a fair go for all. With the support of people like Rachel from Gympie and Giles from Murray Bridge, with the support of people like you, the issue of Indigenous health has come a long way. The federal government's commitment to a long-term plan and the initial four-year funding package is starting to show results. But it's just the beginning, and it's only together that we will ensure the ongoing commitment and funding that is needed to bring about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health equality. This new COAG funding has improved health outcomes within our, within our community. Under the Healthy Transition to Adulthood program, we elected to bring on five young trainees and train them to become Aboriginal health workers. Two of them be trained as mental health first aid instructors. Around chronic disease, the evidence that we're now seeing is absolutely fantastic. We're Aboriginal people are now taking control of their health. We've empowered them, we've given them the access to good information and we've given them access to good, strong, culturally appropriate health care. The other area that we're really seeing some excellent results is around child and maternal health. Previously we had little rabbits, so to speak, little tiny little babies, to now where we're getting leading specialists at King Edward Memorial Hospital for Women complimenting our service on how well we do so. Without the investment of Healthy for Life, that I wouldn't be in the service. That The money's come for me to work here from that funding source. The partnership with the hospital has been a really important aspect of how the model works um, because I can't do it on my own and I need the help of the hospital and the two of us working together have made a difference to Aboriginal women's health. In the five years that I've been working here the, the weight, baby's weights have increased and the babies that are being born are much more robust and healthy looking children. Access in Aboriginal health is, is one of the main determinants of health outcomes. And that's why we're here in Brunswick Junction today, 40 kilometres out of our usual central base in Bunbury. At SWAMS we've done all we can to try and uh, be as innovative as possible. The eye health camera uh, enables images to be taken and we then send those remotely back to the uh, Lion's Eye Institute in Perth and an ophthalmologist there can um, engage in a Skype consultation with our patients. It's fantastic technology and it's helping to close the gap in this area. We've noticed in recent times that uh, more patients are starting to use our service uh, more regularly and that's the way that we'll ultimately close the gap. Well, I've been able to um, use the funding uh, to work as far away as Narragin, Collie, the Bunbury regions, setting up groups, uh, women's groups um, in three regions and also setting up a men's group, a youth group. We've got more education out there. We, um, our people are starting to manage their own health. Not too many of our people are being hospitalised and, um, yeah, I think there's, there has been a change. I've been through a bit with my mum and that's ended up making me feel quite depressed so ever since I've been coming here it's turned my well my life around. I was a really shy person so but now I'm the type of person that'll get out there in the community. It's pushed me to get a job. I've been employed. They see me as a really big role model in our family and our community. The impact that the Close the Gap campaign has had on our work has been astronomical. 
it has been a major supporter in, in ensuring COAG funds were actually given to health services such as ours. To know that more than 130,000 Australians took part in Close the Gap Day is phenomenal. It's a great commitment. It also shows that there is so much goodwill. There are so many people who do care. Supporters of the Close the Gap campaign can help us uh, by continuing to maintain um, awareness of, of the effectiveness of the investment by government, contact their MPs, because we on the ground are starting to see some really great health outcomes. If COAG funding was to be ceased and pulled from our organisation tomorrow, the instant impact would be seven people would lose their jobs. Programs would go. If the funding stops, uh, the groups will stop. They'll go back into their old lifestyle. It's hard to build up trust with people and when you, once you take that funding away and say, oh look, we can't have the groups no more, then the trust stops. Basically, we would go back to how we were four years ago of just providing just a generalised health service. Yeah. The first four years was only the building blocks. We now need to be able to continue on so that we can put the house together. At the moment, we've just got the foundation down and that's what the first four years was about, was putting down good, Proposals. solid foundations in health services. It's the next four years of funding that will become the critical part of COAG and whether or not we will make a difference. If people didn't continue to push and didn't continue to get these um, innovative programs out there and they thought that what they'd probably done is enough and it's put a little bit of a dent in it so that looks really good. Very quickly any gains would be overtaken. It's really about sustainability, it's really about these programs being ongoing and well supported and I think it's continuing that at the same tempo and the same speed you know for, for quite a bit longer yet. And together, we will make a difference to the health and health and wellbeing outcomes for Aboriginal people in years to come. But to, we need to do this together now. Investing in a healthy future, to me, means a lot more than the, the monetary commitment, which of course we need. But it's about building up the workforce. It's about really raising the profile of Aboriginal health. Investing in a healthy future means we'll be able to see healthier children in the community and as a result healthier adults that contribute more to society. Investing in a healthy future means empowering the community to take control and direction of their own health. Coming to this healing group has um, helped me invest in my health and my family, my nieces and nephews. You can't have a healthy future without somebody taking um taking responsibility for that future and that's our, our responsibility as community members. We need to make a commitment to that and once we make that commitment the biggest, the, one of the biggest factors is for that commitment to have integrity, that you follow through on your commitment, that it's not just lip service. It's not an Aboriginal problem or an Aboriginal issue, you know, it's a national issue. It's a national solution that we need, you know, everybody needs to work in together. To all the supporters out there, uh, we will make a difference, we will get there and thank you. <laughs>